Ladies and gentlemen, very good afternoon. Very good afternoon, few panelists. Very difficult task now, right? After having such a wonderful morning and a lot of aspects already discussed about how important basic science is for sustainable development. But we will try together to put yet another angle into this important discussion. As mentioned already, I am Pavel Kabat. I am currently Secretary General of the International Human Frontier Science Program Organization, G7 organization established back in 1987, which is basically walking the talk of science across the continents, pretty much like CERN does, and using science not only for excellence, but also for building understanding and peace across the world. We have a distinguished panelist today, and we will have a panel in uh, two parts. First part will be them speaking about uh, why they think the year was important for them, for their institutions, for their countries, for their continents. And after that, we go back to the discussion. And I have prepared two questions to the discussion, which I will introduce later. And hopefully, they will be engaging also you from the room. So let me start according to the program with the uh, first uh, panelist who will tell us a little bit about the importance of the year of science, basic science for sustainability. Alves Rodriguez. Alves is from Columbia Academy of Exact Physical and Natural Sciences. I will give a little bit of the introduction to him, but not all because of course these people have very long CVs. So Alves is an assistant professor at the Department of Mathematics, Faculty of Sciences at Universidad Nacional de Colombia. Um, he's a system engineer, graduated from Universidad Distrital Francisco Jose de Caldas, master degree and PhD in computer system engineering from Universidad of Colombia. He's a member of the uh, Acad uh, Colombian Academy of Scientists, Young Scientists, and he has been also um, very much active internationally, including the year and also beyond the year and before. Carlos, what is yours? Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, I'm basically going to talk about the international year for uh, my country, for Colombia. Uh, as a member of the Young Academy, uh, my role uh, with my partners from the Young Academy was to help to organize this uh, Colombian uh, year activities for the sustainable development. And basically, the, the Academy of Sciences were the focal point with the help of the Young, the Young Academy. And the idea and the strategy in Colombia was to develop different events oriented to different audiences with different goals. The first one was to enforce the presence and visibility of women in science. Uh, the second one, to understand science as a global public good. The third one, establish importance of basic science and its relation with society and with social and human science to achieve the SDGs. And for, for achieving that, we develop different kind of, of activities. Uh, one activity is in the branch of open access. The idea of our open access uh, track was to share experience of practical experiences related to access to science in Colombia. And here I, I personally received a lot, of, a lot of lessons and also questions that were shared by the different institutions and universities and also independent researchers and people of the Academy of Sciences. E, there are some important questions that I am now thinking about it. And this is a question me, that is why are we doing research? We are, we, do we do research to publish on a database or we are doing research to solve problems in our societies, for example? This kind of comments are voices from people that present on the different events that we perform during the year. The other point is communities that are part of the solution. As researchers, I think there are people, independent researchers, that go to communities and make the communities part of the solutions and involve these communities in the development of different uh, solutions to problems that they have. Mm, also, uh, they recognize the riches in diversity and culture and also uh, understand that we can make very important contributions. Mm, also, there is a track of good practices, I'm going to be short, uh, but the idea is that to 
provide the STEM teaching, but that is based on evidence. This is oriented to school students and also to the teachers, just to show how they can uh, improve and develop different kind of materials that are accessible to children and also to professors to teach based on evidence about climate change, for example. Mm, another last point that is important is the, to do, be conscient that we need to, to provide a dialogue between sciences because um, the idea to, we cannot talk about SDGs without a change in behavior. They, we invite some people from social scientists and they uh, actually make us uh, to think about this, to recognize this importance of the, by example, native knowledge of the people of the Amazon, because they know how to maintain the, the, divers, the diversity. And these ethnographic studies are really important for us, uh, even for me as, as a professor of the Department of Mathematics. The, and now there are new challenges, how I can apply my research. And this kind of change are, are the result of our year. Another conclusion for a uh, professor of social science is that to achieve these SDGs, we need respect. Respect for the environment is a matter of behavioral science. So we need to establish a dialogue with communities and also a dialogue between science. I, that's all that I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alas. Thank you so much. You will come back to some of the points you made. Um, I see one of the most active contributors to the year was the Chinese academic community. We have heard many about many activities, many proactive uh, steps. So, Director General Professor Gang Su of the Bureau of Frontier Sciences and Basic Research at Chi's Academy of Sciences will be giving us briefing about how was the year perceived and actually conducted in China. Professor Su um, has a degree from uh, Lanzhou University and he has a distinguished academic career. 1993-99, he spent um, time at State University in Stony Brook, United States. He was Alexander von Humboldt Research Fellow in Köln, Germany, and also Japanese GSPS Fellow in Tokyo. Um, I would like to invite you to make a statement. Okay, thank you very much for your nice introduction. So uh, it's also great pleasure for me to, uh, to be here to discuss with you. Uh, on the why the International Year of Basic Science for sustain, uh, Sustainable Development is so important. Uh, I take uh, the examples of uh, the practices uh, in China. Uh, you know that in September 2021, the Chinese President Xi Jinping proposed the Global Development Initiative and the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly, aiming at deepening international cooperation, accelerating the implementation of healthier development, and building a global development community, and also promoting the realization of stronger, greener, and healthier development. The basic science as the source of the entire scientific system provides important scientific support for in-depth understanding of the issues and pathways to solve the problems and goals of global sustainable development, such as zero hunger, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, sustainable cities and communities, climate action, and also underworld and the terrestrial organisms at the central. So in recent uh, years, uh, in the period of uh, international year, the China has attained the great importance to basic science, taking it as an engine for scientific and technological and industrial development, and has continued to increase funding and policy support with the overall increasing stress of basic research. So at the same time, the China actively promotes international cooperation in basic science. So the increases the opening up of basic research programs to the outside world, encourage Chinese scientists to take the initiative to go out, actively participating in various types of basic research groups around the world, 
actively participating in the international meetings in the field of basic sciences, takes the initiative to set up cutting aid topics. We also welcome scholars from all over the world to come to China to carry out scientific communications and cooperation in basic research so as to jointly promote the progress of science and make greater contributions to the well-being of mankind. So in the period of international year, the CAST, as the keynote of the network of IYBSSD in China, so the CAST organized many activities with the universities and other uh, organizations and associations like Chinese Physical Society, the Chinese Chemical Society, the Chinese Astronomical Society, the Chinese Graphic, uh, Graphical Society, and so on. These activities have to promote of the people, of, of, of the uh, non-experts, to understand in depth the importance of basic science. And they're attracting young generations, the young people in pursuing the interest of basic sciences. The CAS also supports scientists to organize programs on environment, climate change, green chemistry, open science, open innovations, and so on. So uh, in the forms of uh, organized uh, workshops, symposiums, and exhibitions, the public lectures, and so on. So I think this is very important to make the China and, uh, I mean, the, the society to issue a uh, lot of policies to support basic sciences, especially to support the young scientists to do uh, top research works in basic science. So this is uh, what I want to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Su, thank you. <laughs> Next statement will come uh, from uh, Professor Abba Bentil Andam. She's from Ghana. She's a distinguished academic uh, as well in this community here. She's the chair of the Ghana Committee for the celebration of this particular year. She is a former president of the Ghanaian um, Academy of Arts and Sciences, and um, she has been working internationally in different positions. She held positions in United Kingdom, and in Germany, and in Italy, and in Ghana currently. Her field is the cosmic radiation physics, and uh, she has been uh, studying uh, uh, at Durham at UK, and she's also a recipient of very prestigious, very important UNESCO Chair for Women's Science in Africa, West Africa region. Professor, what is yours? Thank you. This uh, PowerPoint file that I sent, can it be projected? Was it received? I sent a PowerPoint file. I sent a PowerPoint file for this uh, program, was it received by the directorate and can it be projected, please? Well, I'll talk about uh, what we did in Ghana for the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development, for which the closing ceremony is today. In Ghana, we received the news through the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. And the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences has close collaboration with the Ghana National Commission for UNESCO. So these two establishments came together to invite other groups to join a national committee for which I was privileged to join and to be chairman of. The committee also brought together 
the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, the Ghana Nuclear Regulatory Authority, the Ghana Science Association, the Ghana Institute of Physics, Women in Nuclear, the Ghana chapter, as well as the full backing we had from the Sector Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation. We had the full support of the Minister for Education and the whole sampit, the Ghana National Commission for UNESCO Works. In addition, we had the good fortune that other people who were not exactly in grouped institutions, but for example, a brilliant young lady called Miss Adwan Pomfi, who had a non-governmental organization, her NGO centered on young people in science. We had a young person called Mr. Charles Ofori, whose ampit was for technology of basic science used in daily applications. We had Professor Marianne Santua Nkansa, who chaired the meeting this morning, who was working for the Global Young Academy. And with these other people, we put together a team that because of the COVID-19 so prevalent, we were meeting most of the time online. But even with these restricted arrangements, we were able to launch an impressive ceremony. The opening ceremony was launched on the campus of the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission with the full support of the Director General of the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. We also had an outreach program by the Women in Nuclear Ghana chapter at the Ghana Acad Atomic Energy Commission Basic School. Following that, we had the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics sponsorship to the Ghana Science Association for their biennial scientific research conference at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, Ghana. And with the IUPAP sponsorship, channeled through the Commission 13, the C13 for IUPAP is the Commission for Physics and Development. And I'm happy to serve on that commission. So with some support, we had actually a member of C13, Professor Michael Steiners from Canada, joining us online to give two impressive lectures. Following that, we went back to Accra and continued the celebration. And so we have here a poster downstairs where we had the lunch about the Ghana celebration. We also put on the general international website our activities. And I will encourage everybody to go have a look. In addition, this PowerPoint file which I sent, which has not been projected, is available, please, and can be obtained by everybody from me using my email contact or WhatsApp contact or through the organizers of this closing ceremony. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor. And we have a last intervention in this first part, which comes from Professor Patrick Flandre. Patrick is former president of the French Academy of Sciences here in France, across the border in France, not in France. He is an uh, expert and a uh, recognized known scientist uh, in the field of um, uh, non stationary signal processing. Um, frequency wave method, scaling stochastic processes. I think he's a mathematician by training and complex system scientist as well. 
Patrick and I worked very hard to prepare one of the contributions to this year, which was the summit we organized with, together with the Academy uh, last June in, uh, in Paris on the very topic of this particular discussion. Patrick. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, first, I would like maybe to make some uh, general comments. Of course, uh, this will all up quite a lot with things which have already been said by a number of people, but I think it's important to, to repeat because it's at the core of uh, what we are interested in here. First, I would say that in this international year, there is one letter which is important, which is a B for basic. And basic science is really something which has to be supported because very often it's something which is underestimated in terms of when compared to pure applications or things which can be immediately evaluated by, by people. So this is a concern which is not new. For instance, I would like to recall that uh, three years ago in 2020, uh, the assembly of the uh, s academies of sciences of the countries of the G7 made a number of recommendations, and among the different topics that were addressed was precisely the topic of the importance of basic research. And this was really uh, put uh, on uh, as a very important thing to be supported and accompanied by a number of actions which should allow to better explain, to have the situation better understood and to implement in practice uh, this, this idea of uh, favoring uh, basic, uh, basic uh, science. So uh, I would like first to say that uh, this comes because now science is really on the scene when we are confronted to a number of issues which are unfortunately very much intertwined. For instance, we have seen what happened with the pandemics, but also we are facing the climate change, and we are also facing the loss of biodiversity, and we are thinking about uh, energy and the future energy, and it turns out that all these things are really intertwined, and the key word for addressing this is in a proper way is typically to think in an interdisciplinary way and in a collaborative way. And for this to advance, it's clear that we cannot just take one situation isolated from the other one. And what makes the cement for all this is precisely to think about basic approaches, which ultimately may lead to something which is explicitly applied and, and lead to, to, f to explicit uh, uh, development. Things, for instance, that would happen with the uh, uh, RNA, messenger RNA for, for the COVID. And, and so there is something which has also to, to be said, it, that if we want to favor basic science, clearly this is something which must come for free. And this is something which has to be supported, and to be supported by everybody, I would say, citizens as well as policy makers, and this has to be understood, why are we doing this? And certainly there is an effort to make for explaining and uh, making it really uh, important to, to everybody. And I would say both at the level of the decision makers, okay, but also at the, at the level of the, of the citizens. And to, to, understood, to understand why basic science is important is really something which has to be considered at, at these uh, uh, complementary levels. So if we want to go back to what we tried to do uh, more specifically in France, what we did was indeed to support a number of uh, events, could have been summer school, workshops, conferences, about 20 of them uh, in, in the year, and this was coordinated by some people I would like to thank, which are Christian Amateur and, and uh, Paul uh, and Pierre uh, Auger. And, uh, well, I will not give the list of all the events which have been organized, but I would say that there were, let's say, three different characteristics uh, which are behind. The first one is was precisely this need which was clearly expressed for some interdisciplinarity. And so what we observed is that there was really a willingness to organize summer schools, workshops, intended in particular to, to young researchers, when conf where 
we can confront different approaches from different uh, disciplines. So this is very important, and this has been uh, this has been uh, this has been done. Another thing, which is more related to one action we have with one of our institutes, which is more directed to uh, that institute for uh, uh, research and development, for development, is something which was a collaborative action in between France and people from Africa, and we try also to to have some, and we had some, uh, some meetings for enforcing this type of collaboration, especially with the, uh, the, uh, the goal of, uh, of uh, sustainability. And the third thing I would like to mention is that if, and this is true also with respect to, to young researcher, if the we want these ideas of sustainability to become really understood and true, it goes with education, and education is something which is not only for the people to be educated, the, the young the kids, and, and, but also for the people who are educators. And for instance, now, if we think of all these issues related to the sustainable development goals, very often there is kind of a gap in a generation which is not that easy with how to make the message go to the young generation. And for that, there are efforts which are conducted, and I think, for instance, of the Office for Climate e Education, which was supported uh, within the framework of this year, which precisely is intended to fill this gap, which is to really educate educators so that the chain is really existing in between what scientists in labs and are, are saying and claiming, and how this can be turned into a, a real action for, especially for the young generation, and through them also to the whole uh, of, of society. So uh, what we tried to do was to enforce the links in between the scientific community and these two levels, which are at the politic level, maybe for policymakers, but also at the citizen level. And I don't mention that, of course, this can also go with uh, other actions which are related to participative citizen sciences. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you all again. I think it's um, clear that all of us in the room here, but also communities we are representing, do think that the year was very important and it really made a difference in many ways. But we, of course, have a lot of arguments why, and we need a lot of words to explain that to each other. This is all fine. Now, suppose you are confronted uh, this afternoon with a CNN journalist or with a communication expert, and he or she gives you 10 seconds, right, to say why this year was important. So I would like to play exercise together and give to each, each one of you 15, 20 seconds to answer the following question to make this thing even more tangible. Suppose there was no International Year of Basic Science for System Development. Suppose we didn't have it. Can you name one thing, just one thing, tangible thing, concrete thing, which you, your institution, or your country would not have today. Right? Just one thing. So, Alesh, what would that be? Mm -hmm. No, I think without this international year, we maybe wouldn't have the opportunity of exchange between, know that in Colombia there are scientists that are working directly with communities, and communities are part of the solution. I think this is one important thing. And the other, the importance of basic science to solve complex things. And finally, the, I think the importance of social scientists. Social scientists for solve problems. Okay, thank you. I think we deserve applause, right? I mean, it was clear enough. <laughs> Professor Su, one thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the one thing is uh, it's a... Uh, important uh, in the period of uh, international year. Uh, I want to say is, uh, uh, you know, the Chinese Academy of Sciences uh, last year issued uh, 10 guiding principles uh, for basic research. So aiming at focusing on the, uh, I mean, the, uh, uh, top uh, research topics in science, in pure science. 
as well as the national and the global needs. So that means that we want the scientific researchers to pick the most important questions and problems to solve. So that problems, the issues, should be related to the, I mean, the big development of uh, pure science and, very, and the global needs and national needs. So this is, uh, I think, the very important and uh, also, yeah, guiding the funding mechanism for the basic research. So this I is think very important. Also lesson. very convincing, right? Thank you so much. Good. Okay. Professor Bentil Amdam, what would that be from your side? I think that uh, already we had collaboration amongst the various uh, institutes in Ghana, but the base International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development brought a reinforcement of uh, those relationships. And so now, going to the international decade, we go together as a country, different institutions, but we go together as a country. I think brilliant, thank you so much. <laughs> Patrick Flander, would you like to comment here as well? Yeah, that's a tough question. Uh, I would say that uh, the, uh, the importance was really to make an evidence that basic science is crucial if we want any day, ultimately, to have some application, innovation. And so I think one part of uh, the impact was in direction to the policy makers, I would say, because very often there's kind of confusion because between science and innovation in the sense where innovation should be just something depending of what we want to solve as a problem, whereas it can come just from elsewhere as a result of some basic research. So that was most the enforcement of the, w of the reason of why defending and promoting basic science indeed. Great, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would like to end up with a, what I would call elephant in the room question or point, in which I would like to engage both the panel and your audience. And that goes about following. The Agenda 2030, as we call it, 17 development goals. They are, of course, all very much interrelated, interlinked. Energy with water, water with air quality, with education, climate, all of that. I think the beautiful uh, paradigm for that would be the presentation by State Secretary of Honduras, who said this is all about how to live sustainably with the environment. I think this is what the SDG agenda wanted to do, to put together 17 avenues together to go to sustainable future. Thank you for that, State Secretary. However, we see it also in the room, the science enterprise, which all of us represent here, is still extremely fragmented, extremely disciplinary. We have an extremely disciplinary incentive, all of that. To me, this is the elephant in the room. So what do we do? What do we do to defragment our science to the extent that we can really contribute to this beautiful tale of sustainable future, which comprise all of the 17 goals? So please, what would you do? And if you want some of you speak to that, raise your hand. So I think I will start. I will start with one of you who wants to be first. Thank you. I met a friend at lunchtime, and she was almost apologetic to me, saying that she was not in science. And I said to her, I said, well, it's a secret between me and you. I won't tell anybody. So friend, I'm sorry I didn't keep my word, but it's for a purpose. The purpose is that we go forward in an interdisciplinary manner. And I like the way that the Honorable Minister from Honduras gave the excuses and as examples. Uh, we were punished for speaking the Ghanaian uh, language, but here I am from a village talking to the entire world. You see, and so we have come to a point where we cannot say this person is in physics, chemistry, biology, social science. We have come to a point where to reap the benefit of science as 
a blessed heritage for humanity. We must all be together. My friend from lunchtime in her capacity, I, whatever I have been doing and continue to do, everyone else, as a community, we need to move forward to achieve the sustainable development goals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think it's a really valid statement. <laughs> Any other panelists would like to speak to this challenge? Patrick, maybe? Yeah, uh, m maybe I would say that uh, we can think of uh, how research programs are organized or planned and so on. And I think there are two ways which are complementary, not just in place of the other one, which are either to be really disciplinary and another one which is more interdisciplinary. And I think that interdisciplinarity really makes sense if you have a disciplinary basis. So it's not just to transform all programs into interdisciplinary programs, but creating things which are really oriented to an, an, an interdisciplinarity and collaboration between different fields is one way of going in this direction. For instance, uh, in France, uh, with the CNRS, there has been this, the creation of this uh, Institute for, of Mathematics for Planet Earth, which is typically some interaction between methods which come from pure and applied essentially applied, but a little bit pure mathematics, and also all the stuff about simulation and so, but with the idea of addressing problems which interest physicists, which interest climatologists, which interest people in uh, the study of biodiversity, uh, and also people from the social sciences. And uh, this is certainly one way of, uh, uh, of being affirmative in the action for going in, in this direction. Thank you, thank you very much. So it's both uh, transition in the institutional setting as well, right? Et cetera, thank you. Professor Su? Okay, yeah, uh, concerning this problem, I think uh, uh, the, the government and the uh, universities, uh, the research institutions, and the funding agencies uh, should yeah, support the integrated research programs to address multiple SDGs and bring experts from different disciplines that, uh, yeah, uh, experts to work collaboratively. I think the collaborative working is very important. Uh, the also, I think the uh, collaboration between the science and other sectors, such as the policy makers, and also the business, the civil society is essential for the translating the scientific uh, innovation into the market. I think this is a transfer of uh, knowledge. And also, I think the efficient communications of scientific findings to non-experts uh, is crucial for uh, building the public support for sustainable development uh, policies and the practices. I think this is uh, also important. And, uh, uh, I think the institutional reform may be the necessary in this uh, stage to overcome the disciplinary barriers that currently characterize many science systems, including the uh, reconstructing funding mechanisms to encourage scientists working on issues related to sustainable development. I think this is also important. Uh, that's uh, why the, the, the Chinese Academy of Sciences issues the guiding principles for basic research. I think uh, this is, uh, uh, I mean, the outcomes of this uh, international year. So thank you. Thank you, correct, thank you. And Alash? I, I think that diversity, uh, bio diversity is good. I mean, um, disciplinary science is necessary, but for, for other maybe kind of research, for example, the works that I saw, that I have the opportunity to see, um, there are works with communities, by example, I think they need more visibility, not only national, but also international, because these are works that inspire. And in this moment, maybe I think to, to reach these SDGs, what we need is inspiration, inspire 
people from local communities, uh, politicians, and people, and, com and starting by this visibility, I think is a mechanism altern to have disciplinary science that are necessary to, to achieve this SDGs or to give a in small step in turn to, to achieve that. Thank you very much. I think this transition to system thinking is a responsibility to all of us and all of our shoulders. I see we have time for one or two comments or questions from the audience. Would there be someone who would like to engage? Uh, Ambassador Koroshi, Chaba Koroshi. Yeah. Thank you very much. <coughs> Pavel, to your concrete question, the challenges we are facing today are not standalone challenges. We perceive them as standalone when we talk about water, we talk about food, we talk about pandemics, but we know that all of them are interrelated and the real watershed moment to understand how they interact and how they reinforce each other. So our answer for this very systemic challenge that we are, uh, we are, uh, we are facing, our, answer, our attempt to answer was uh, to create a systemic response. We had to break it down into 17, uh, 17 goals, uh, but the real difficulty in the implementation, as your question also indicates, are budgets, our institutions, our education are all siloed. All what, how we work, our, our laws are designed for, uh, for standalone problems, for, uh, for addressing standalone issues. So the big challenge to the scientific community, for the political class, is in the forthcoming years to find the ways how to turn a possibility of systemic challenge, uh, a systemic response to answer sy uh, systemic challenges. It will have to entail our budgets, our institutions, our regulations. It will also have to address the interdisciplinary sciences. And we have to understand better that our actions that produce positive and neg negative externalities, how we can use better the, the positive externalities and how we can reduce the negative externalities. That is the crack and that, that is the key of our success for sustainability transformation. Thank you. Thank you very much for this, I think, beautiful summary of the way ahead. To me, this is a perfect bridge between this wonderful panel and discussion which may come later today, and that is what content should we give to the decade? And I think if a decade would be able to uh, uh, manage to attack this particular issue of integrative, cross-disciplinary, et cetera, et cetera, thinking, that would be the perfect target. So. Thank you again, the wonderful panel. I would like to ask you to give them again applause because I think they did a good job. <laughs> and